What is up team, Killchan here. 10.2 is officially out and we are mere hours away from season three dropping. I'm pumped, you're pumped, everyone's pumped, but you guys are gonna need a Fury Guide to help you guys out to get that foot through the door. So this is where that comes in. Now, keep in mind, until you break your four piece, you're still running the old 10-1 build. I'll have a link up into the video for that if you wanna check out my video. Otherwise, it's just the typical anger management ravager kind of play style that you may already be familiar with. Keep using that until you officially break four piece, whether that's from getting the new two piece or whether just breaking it by virtue of eye level upgrades over time. You know, the stat increases just happen to outweigh not breaking the four piece for the current eye level. So when that happens, then this guy's gonna be uh, what you wanna focus on from there. So let's get it. So kicking off with talents, the right hand side of the specialization tree completely gutted. We don't incentivize Raging Blow or that anger management playstyle with Onslaught and Ravenger. Now we shift completely to the left hand side of the specialization tree, focusing on Annihilator and Bloodthirst. The name of the game is really the damage amps provided to Bloodthirst. Now Bloodthirst obviously can get their amp through Reckless Abandon because we're not picking up anger management anymore. So Reckless Abandon will make it Bloodbath instead of Bloodthirst. Everything else still works for Blood Darth, obviously. The amp from Vicious Contempt directly, as well as the fact that it plays into the Cold Steel Hot Blood with the bleeds. Increased bleed damage. The new tier set increases your crit chance by 100% and 150% damage after you do Odin's Fury. Odin's Fury does more damage. That also bleeds, or uh, well, lends itself to the shorter duration thanks to the CDR with hitting crits on Bloodthirst. So everything works in tandem all around this Odin's Fury and how that plays into Bloodthirst and vice versa. So as such, in a raid environment, we still want to pick up Spear of Bastion. The real benefit of Spear of Bastion for a single target is the Elysian Might uh, capstone, I guess, augmentation to Spear, which is the 25% crit damage. It's I'll be honest, it's basically all about the 25% crit damage. So really maximizing your uptime in that spear zone. Make sure you don't use it, you know, when you have to be running out of it for raid mechanics or whatever. You really want to min-max how much uptime you're standing inside your own spear to get the 25% uh, increase there. And again, it marries beautifully up in terms of just the cooldown timings. Everything's all one and a half minute. Makes it very clean and tidy to make sure you get the biggest crits you can in that spear. Likewise, because we're not running any management, that gets rid of Berserker's Torment now as well. And we want to double up on how many Odin's Furies we can have by getting us a free Odin's Fury with Avatar whenever we pop that. So this is our raid build. Very minor tweaks in terms of AoE. So for example, straight away, you will notice that um, Nauru, the very first boss of the new raid, is AoE. So you're going to be opening up with this one anyway. We simply shift out of the Execute Talents into Meat Cleaver because any AoE always requires Meat Cleaver. And then you can pick up um, out of Spear Bastion going into Thunderous Roar. Anytime there is more incentive on the bleed and the AoE and how we can spread Cold Steel Hot Blood to multiple targets and that kind of thing, that immediately makes Thunderous Words pretty important. And likewise, you pick up Thunderous Roar as a part of that as well. So this will be our AoE raid talent. Again, all the links will be down in the description so you can just easily copy paste. But finally, let's have a look at the Mythic Plus changes. So most notably, we actually have a lot more points to play with by virtue of the fact that execute is nowhere near as much of a high priority as it once was, we can actually pull out a cruel strikes and that gives us the stat budget or the talent point budget, sorry, uh, to actually pick up shockwave, which is yeah, really nice, honestly. Uh, very good group utility in that regard. If you had never needed this for whatever reason, I would avoid picking up uproar. While we typically did it because we were just sending every cooldown whenever it popped up and it was very fast paced, we want to very strictly keep everything to that beautiful one and a half minute cooldown window. Um, so avoid uproar. If ever you don't need Shockwave for whatever reason, you've got options like your Seismic Reaver, Cruel Strikes, Pain and Game. That's what I would be recommend pushing towards. The only thing on the actual other side for the AoE stuff, obviously Meat Cleaver, but you swap your Dancing Blades for Titanic Rage, which allows Odin's Fury to actually enrage you straight up. So you can immediately open with that and it gives you the four full stacks of the Meat Cleaver whirlwind buff uh, as well. So that's all you're changing in terms of the talents. So for stats, we'll blast through this real quick. Uh, crit, absolutely worst value stat uh, in all scenarios of this new build because of how much free crits we're getting through the tier set and even talents whenever you do pick it up. Uh, Blood Craze is an example. So you're getting ramping crits everywhere. It's just lots of crits for free, not anything to do with the stat as a secondary. 
The other three are all pretty close to each other, sort of. Um, so any combination of haste, mastery, and versatility is going to serve you well. Whereas typically in a single target environment, you will notice a mastery comes out ahead. And then in an AOE environment, so your Mythic Plus scenarios, your haste will typically come ahead there. Those three particular stats are close enough as long as you're prioritizing your main one for that particular area of content, being mastery for single target or haste for AOE. The two remaining secondaries that are not crit are really close to each other. So some sort of combination of all three of those will serve you well in both raiding and mythic plus. Whereas if you only tackle one of those particular things, then yeah, you got mastery verse for single target for raiding or haste mastery for mythic plus. If you only do those particular areas of content. So for gems, enchants, and consumables, starting off with the gems, we want the primary stat and mastery for our primalist gem. We can only use one of these as a reminder, and that's called the skillful limited diamond. Now the remaining gem slot, cause I'm not even remotely going to touch on this. Reason being is because one, we're going from seven sockets down to zero, one or two, because as we start replacing gear, we're going to be losing these sockets until we eventually get them back again late in the season. And also, as long as you're not getting crit on the gem, all three possible variations in terms of the stats, maybe verse, haste, mastery, whichever high, whichever low, doesn't matter. All three of them are going to be relatively similar to each other and they're actually going to be quite volatile. Based on your current gear of your actual pieces of gear, um, you'll notice those three stats are going to chop and change. And that further gets exacerbated by whether or not you're focusing on Mythic Plus or Raid or a bit of both, whatever the case may be really not too fast as long as you're not gemming for crit you're fine now as for the enchants we're still getting avoidance on wrist and cloak no changes there waking stats on the chest no changes there belt class no changes the um leg enchant with the strength or well, primary stat and armor reason being we get armor if you want to recap the memory of why uh armor to the teeth so extra armor gives us strength uh, by 10 percent so Armor on the legs is yeah handy in that regard. Watcher's Loam is fine. You could get Planes Runner, but uh, we have plenty of in-combat mobility, so we really don't need to worry about movement speed too much. Um, Watcher's Loam will serve us perfectly fine there. Now, as for the Ring Enchants, I've gone Haste because that's what's currently seeming the best for Mythic Plus, and I'll be yeah going hard on Mythic Plus at the moment their servers come up until Raid on Thursday night. But um, outside of that, I would typically go Mastery as your Ring Enchants. So that will keep you covered both comfortably on both sides of things uh when it comes to ring enchants and gems especially with how volatile they are all over the stop uh all over the shop sorry honestly they're really cheap as well you could be min maxing based on okay i've done my raids for the week so now i'm going to change all my stuff to a more mythic plus focus and i'll change out my gems and ring enchants and then when you get to raid night again you can change them all back to help you with raid you could min max that pretty comfortably for like 5k a week 5k gold a week honestly they're really quite cheap uh lastly though the weapon enchants so this is the significant change we typically always ran uh sophic devotion in some capacity previously whether it was one sophic and one wafting or just double sophic uh however now full wafting devotion absolutely no sophic at all uh yeah the haste end up pushing us ahead in both raid and mythic plus so keep that in mind as for our consumables though uh, let me open my bags. Now, really not too much changes there. We're still running Hissing Rune for the mastery on our weapons. Still getting the ultimate power for the potion. You can toss between your Corrupting Rage and Versatility. Now, even though Corrupting Rage is crit and crit is our worst stat, the amount of crit we're getting, and this particular vial is the best in terms of DPS, but if you're happy to sacrifice a bit of that DPS for both offensive and defensive prowess, Tepid versatility is typically your best bet. Whenever it comes to prog raid fights or pushing higher keys or at your capacity level keys, versatility uh, vial is usually the way to go. Now we do have a new healing potion. That is the Dreamwalker's healing potion. It's significantly better than the refreshing one. It does a slightly, barely, barely less. We're talking like 5k health, um, less than the current refreshing potion up front. However, it doubles up by giving you the same value over six seconds as well. So as you can see, 155k up front instead of 160k up front, and then 155 over six seconds as well. So significantly better stock up on these particular healing potions um i got a stack of 60 for only around i think 1k 2k it's generally pretty cheap at the moment well obviously you've got your augment rune people will be using the unlimited augment rune when they hit renown 18 with the dreamwalker people 
But for now, yeah, you'll just stick with your regular old one and just buy a feast. You could have personal feed, but generally the feasts are cheaper enough. If someone else isn't dropping a feast in either Mythic Plus or Raid, then you can just drop it yourself. Stock up, feasts are fine. Uh, and then if you're not doing Mythic Plus or Raid, you really don't need food buff anyway. So this is specifically just for those two areas of content. And that's all your consumables. So finally, let's touch on the rotation. So uh, we'll also briefly kind of bring up the macro side of things. I was a little bit lazy and I had everything neatly packaged into a macro, including my at player Ravager. So when I'll charge in, the Ravager will spawn at my feet and uh, all the consumables and uh, racials, on use trinket, everything like that, neatly in a macro. So now you're going to want to uncouple this sort of. I have my own recklessness by itself. This is for your recklessness charge opener. And uh, then you can have an avatar macro. Now, it is important to note, and the reason why I bring uh, the macros things into play is because previously, Berserker's Torment meant that if we wanted the extra duration, we had to have avatar before recklessness. It was just an unfortunate. Uh, part of it all that uh, yeah we needed to macro it where avatar was ahead however now that we don't run berserkers torment we can put recklessness back on top of avatar to make sure that recklessness buff is applied when avatar is activated uh, so that way we get instead of 10 rage 20 rage for casting avatar so do keep in mind you want to switch that back throw in all your racials or on use trinkets or whatever is relevant for this particular macro. And that'll be your main DPS cooldown. And then you have recklessness as its own separate thing. So that way you can do your opener. Now, as for the opening, just like usual, you want a recklessness and charge with RA instead, you will get 50 rage upfront for just hitting recklessness at all. And then that coupled with the 40 rage that you get from charge because recklessness is active. That means you've got 90 rage straight out of the gate. You can immediately rampage. With that in mind, every time being able to immediately rampage, that's what you'll be doing with the single target priority. We'll just, uh, you know, hit our rec, charge in, rampage straight away, hit our bloodthirst, then go into all our cooldowns. Whereas um, when you're in AOE, we still get enraged thanks to Titanic Rage with our Odin's Fury. We're going to use our normal Odin's Fury, do one cycle of DPS for our meat cleaver buffs that we get thanks to Titanic Rage as well, then hit Avatar and Thunderous Roar, and then do another cycle of our DPS. And then we'll go into our regular rhythm from there. Um, when I say cycle, I'm referring to Rampage and the RA version of Bloodthirst, which is Bloodbath. So you go Rampage, Bloodbath, Rampage, Bloodbath. That's all four of the Meat Cleaver buffs used. And then you would typically reapply it, whether it's through Whirlwind itself or through a um, Odin's Fury, whether it's an Avatar version or a normal Odin's Fury, because that will then also apply the four stacks of the Meat Cleaver again. And then you do another cycle which is your, again, Rampage and Bloodbath, Rampage, Bloodbath. Now, the reason I say that as a cycle is because once your Recklessness is done, you really tank in terms of your Rage generation. So you're going to be relying heavily on Slams, Whirlwind if you absolutely have to, but most importantly, your Sudden Death procs for Execute. Or if you're in Execute range, then you can do Execute as normal. Thanks to Improved Execute, it generates 20 Rage. This is your most valuable Rage generation outside of Recklessness. So, uh, yeah, you're really going to have to rely on that to make sure you have a good flow of rage to make sure your RA is propped every time your bloodthirst is ready and you won't be able to pull it off every time. Unfortunately, our recklessness uptime has gone from, you know, 90 plus percent all the way down to 30 to 50, somewhere in that range. It's much, much more, unfortunately. But it's the nature of the beast and, uh, yeah, you just need to make sure you keep that flow. So we're going to open up with our recklessness like that. And then charge in, immediately able to rampage. But in AoE, we actually want to hit Odin's Fury instead. Then we do one cycle, which, like I said, is rampage, bloodbath, rampage, bloodbath. Once that's done and you've done your two, I actually did three there, just ignore that, it's fine. Then you hit your Avatar and Reckless, uh, sorry, Thunderous Roar. That will reapply your um, four stacks again of the Meat Cleaver. Then you do another cycle, which is just your rampage, bloodbath, rampage, bloodbath. Once that's done, then you're into your regular cycle of your um whirlwind so you're relying on whirlwind to keep the flow going and this is the moment where you start to notice that you're really out of the rage game so now your cycle is completely out of whack because you constantly have to throw in your executes and regular bloodthirst without ra or even slams and things like that it's going to be much more volatile in terms of keeping that but as long as you know that as soon as your four stacks are out then just make sure that you're yeah doing your best to kind of keep the flow of that Every four abilities, you just want to make sure you can uh, hit your stuff that you got going on. So 
Uh, you will take a fair amount of time, like I am right now, throwing in a rampage before you should, when you realistically you should just be uh, sending the bloodthirst instead. It's because we're so used to seeing rampage being up and we should hit it because we, you know, didn't care about RA at all. But now RA is totally a thing, so we need to make sure we're being very careful to uh, always send bloodbath whenever it's there and not doubling up on the rampage. It's I'm still failing at it. You will as well for the first period of time. But uh, that's essentially where we kind of want to end up. And in terms of the single target rotation, everything is literally identical. The only thing you're missing is that you don't need to keep reapplying your um, whirlwind buff for the meat cleaver at all. So yay, single target is just slightly easier essentially, but you'll still whirlwind if there's absolutely nothing else to do. And keep in mind when switching back to Dancing Blades because of not having the auto enrage from Odin's Fury, after that opener, once you've done your charge and your um, recklessness charge, sorry, you want to immediately do the rampage to get enraged straight away. You don't want to be hitting Odin's Fury or anything. That's only strictly an AoE thing. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. It's pretty simple from there. Uh, like I said, the cycle is the dream because you just want to be able to hit that one bang of rampage, bloodbath, rampage, bloodbath, and just keep that going forever. However, rage gain is going to be your biggest issue and uh yeah you just do your best outside of that and you'll be right hopefully that gives you guys a firm grasp of where to kick off on we're going to be doing a much more in-depth uh look at you know all the gear and everything like that i specifically didn't touch on that because embellishments are quite low in impact now and um just for the sake of it though run your two shadow um the shadow armor patch they're still your best for now uh that could be subject to change you might want to run Allied wrist guards, uh, if you want a bit more of a defensive option, but they're all low impact and all relatively close enough that you could mix a match between the two of either double shadow flame uh, armor patch or one shadow flame and one allied wrist guards. But uh, I want to get much more in depth when the season's been out for a little bit. Trinket tuning has happened, and more importantly, the axe has come out. Hopefully, we'll see more information about the uh, two handed Lego axe, and I feel like it's going to serve its purpose better when i have the much more in-depth guide later once the gear is all out and you can get into the nitty-gritty of things and have relevant information based on the mythic plus and the raid itself um but yeah this will at least get your foot in the door thanks very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video we'll have another one of these for arms just like a quick blast through and uh that'll get you guys in the step in the right direction for arms as well heading into 10.2 these